and I thought I had the edge on everybody being the first student at Harley School, but he quickly, quickly told me and showed me that I didn't know shit. Right. And he said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you properly. The ring psychology was way harder. You know, I, it's really, it's really important to me to tell a story. And I knew that that was a big key to be a successful pro wrestler. Right. Valentine. Right. I remember going before I went out to the curtain, Valentine's telling me, he's like, all right, kid, I'm going to give you a drop kick and I'm going to give you this. And Harley was right there and he gets nothing. Harley's a different type of character on the road, man, because he he knows where he wants to get and he's going to get there and nobody's going to slow him down. <laughs> Harley, I need to get to the WWE in the next two years because if I don't, I'm going to be too old to really do anything. And he just started laughing at me, but I really felt that way, man. I got a lot of memories with Noah. You know, I spent six months in their dojo over there. You know, living with those guys, training with them. You know, I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna just let him know this is okay. So I hit him back. He hits me even harder. I hit him back. He hits me even harder, and I just caught him with a forearm right here on the sweet spot in the chin, and it wasn't intentional. It was just me firing back, and man, he head up, arms out, nest he plunged right on his back. And you know as a young guy in that situation, you know you fucked up. Because the whole crowd goes, ooh. And I was I was just mad because I was like, well, there's my spot right there. I'm, I'm never going to get a job there, you know. Whatever you can to get noticed. And I knew Benoit was a huge mark for Japan. So I started going in the ring doing my Japanese stretches, not just the regular, right. you know, the regular legs out. I did my neck, my, you know, my neck bridges and everything, stuff that I knew that would stick out to him. And sure enough, he came right up to me and asked me, he goes, have you been to Japan? Uh, Chris had kind of a, a little bit of a reputation to be a little, not unstable. He was never out of control, but, you know, he had his bad days and his good days like anybody else. Let's just say uh, my, one of my more painful matches, I guess, because Lance and I wanted to do things our way, and those guys wanted to do things their way, and that never works in the ring. Who won it as far as? I wouldn't say nobody was nobody was a winner, but we all walked out of there with some some knots on our head, and and both we all we we, we both realized maybe this is not the best match for us. Right. You know, no one's getting over this one. But Tajiri is a lot of fun when he wants to work with you. He's the heaviest 190 pound guy I've ever picked up in my life. Everybody says that. You know, and and well, he's smart. You know, he he doesn't want to get he doesn't want guys 270 at the time throwing him around and hurting him. Got to a point where. You start realizing he's just a man. He puts on his pants one leg at a time, just like everybody else. And he's just looking for guys to get over and make him money. I mean, that's ultimately the bottom line. He's looking for guys to make him money. And that's and that's the thought process we had to switch to. You know what I'm saying? What's going to make this company money? That's what's going to get us over. That's what's going to keep our jobs. It was funny. The night that uh, we won the tag belts, Hurricane actually knocked me out in that match. Um, we had a little, a little discrepancy at the house shows before that, before we were going to drop the titles to him. I put Hurricane in an abdominal stretch. I'm holding him and I'm holding him and I'm holding him. And he's like, let me hip toss you, let me hip toss you. And I said, no, let me hip toss you. No, I threw him down, kicked him in the head, he blows through the curtain. Who the fuck do you think you are? How long have you been working for this company? Who, who, you know, what the hell are you doing not listening to me? And I told him right there, you know, Big Show standing there, Cena standing there, Arn standing there, Sean standing there, everybody standing there. I go, Arn told me not to take, not to take a hip toss out of an abdominal stretch, and I'm not going to do it. What, I mean, what do you want me to say? Should have fucking listened to me and came in the back and blah, blah, blah. About that time, Lance come through the corner, and I tell you what, he is ready to eat Hurricane's ass. I do remember of that. Was I was supposed to go to the top and hit my bulldog onto Hurricane for the finish. And he kept telling me, no, don't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. And I remember specifically telling him to fuck off and to get where he needs to be because I'm going to the top. And that's the prettiest bulldog I've done in a long time. And I went up to the top and I don't remember most of it. And it was Sean and Hunter speaking up, going, these guys can work. We want to work with them. You know? And it was a night off working with Lance and I. You know, We didn't hurt guys. We were in the right place. We're good workers. Number one, number two, they didn't even know their own gimmick. All their stuff, their head, their, uh, the, using the head for a battering ram, the skirt, the kilt spots, all that stuff. Lance and I came up with them guys. I've seen him slap the shit out of a referee a couple times because he opened up his mouth when he shouldn't have. Right. Took him in the back room and, and told him what he thought about him and slapped the shit out of him. But uh, when it come to any other boys, no, I 
see him do anything like that. I've seen him slap the shit out of a referee a couple times because he opened up his mouth when he shouldn't have. Right. Took him in the back room and, and told him what he thought about him and slapped the shit out of him. But uh, when it come to any other boys, no, I didn't see him do anything like that. And hurt his shoulder that night. On his way home on the plane, dropped a couple. Well, bottom line, there was no seizure. He passed out and couldn't be woken up and was drooling. Right, right. The plane, the, the people on the plane freaked <laughs> out. You get 270 pound gorilla laying there sprawled out and drilling. Fantastic <laughs> memories and way to uh, all those doors that he opened up for other people. He's always going to be remembered as a murderer, you know, and that's, that's heartbreaking for the business. It's heartbreaking for him because I, I, I'm not saying I knew him, but I knew he had a heart.